coral reefs have been called the rainforests of the sea. They are incredibly diverse and beautiful ecosystems, home to thousands of marine species. Approximately 850 million people around the world depend on coral reefs for fishing, recreation, shoreline protection, and other ecosystem services. Coral reefs are incredibly important to humans and the economy, but climate change in the form of warming water temperatures and ocean acidification threatens the survival of coral reefs and the animals that depend on them. As the ocean becomes more acidic, corals are threatened because they cannot keep up with the changes in their environment. Everyday human activities, such as turning on the light in your room, driving a car, and manufacturing are all powered by the burning of fossil fuels. Over time, increased human activity has caused carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere to increase at an unprecedented rate. Because the ocean absorbs about a quarter of the carbon dioxide released into the atmosphere, it is becoming more acidic. Under normal conditions, corals, crabs, clams, and other animals build their calcium carbonate skeletons and shells using carbonate ions. Higher levels of carbon dioxide combine with seawater to create bicarbonate, making the ocean more acidic. With increased bicarbonate in the ocean, corals, crabs, clams, and other animals struggle to create and maintain their calcium carbonate shells and skeletons. Ocean acidification threatens many important species that live in the oceans. However, a recent study done at the University of Miami has shown that one endangered species of coral may be able to combat the effects of ocean acidification. We chose to do this study because Acropora cervicornis, also known as a staghorn coral, has been estimated to be decimated by up to 98% in the Florida reef track. And that's a very sobering statistic, which means that only about 2% of the population is what it was since about the 1970s. So we chose to use this species, the staghorn coral, in order to understand how it's going to respond to climate change. And that will improve our understanding of how we can better conservation efforts. So global warming or temperature increase is detrimental to corals because corals live in a partnership or a symbiosis with algae. And these algae have a very narrow temperature tolerance. And so when the temperature of the ocean increases, the algae become very stressed. So the combination of ocean acidification and temperature together make it much harder for corals to grow because the algae provide the corals with most of their nutrition. And so one of the main things we wanted to test in this study is in the absence of coral symbionts under stress, can the coral feed on its own in order to survive this stressor? So one of the most surprising things that we found in this study is that these corals can actually eat a lot of zooplankton. And we didn't know that they were capable of that because some corals are capable of more feeding than others. And so not only was the staghorn capable of feeding on, on zooplankton, but they also used that zooplankton to increase their lipid stores or energy reserves. And this is kind of analogous to if we as humans were starving, our bodies would rely on our fat reserves first in order to help us survive. It's kind of the same idea. Under climate change stress, the coral needs to increase its lipid reserves in order to keep growing under stress. The findings of this study have important implications for coral restoration efforts. Because climate change will cross park boundaries Marine protected areas by themselves aren't going to protect corals from climate change and ocean acidification. So we're going to have to take additional and more proactive measures. And one of those that we're really excited about these days are coral restoration efforts, where we actually have nurseries where we grow up corals that we think are going to be successful in the future and then outplant them on the reef. Um, the idea is that those colonies will grow up to the point that they'll be able to reproduce. And if we can get corals to reproduce, each coral releases um, millions of gametes, uh, eggs and sperm, into the water. So potentially it could uh, completely repopulate a reef if those um, baby corals are successful. Although coral reefs are threatened by climate change and ocean acidification, studies such as this one provide hope for their potential to recover and survive. If you would like to learn more about coral nurseries and how humans are working to protect coral reefs, please visit rescuereef.com. Those interested in reading this paper can find it at www.rasmus.miami.edu. Saludos a